<laughs> Coming up on Pet Heroes. A family must rely on their golden retriever to help them escape a raging house fire. And while out for a morning walk, a man's dog alerts him to an elderly man trapped in a deadly situation. Hi, I'm Jason McCoy, and welcome to Pet Heroes. Dogs have a unique ability to sense danger before their human companions. But how do they do it? We examine two stories of dogs whose natural talents become the difference between life and death when disaster strikes. Daryl and Christine Unger met on Granville Island in the heart of busy Vancouver. But both were looking for a smaller community to settle down and raise a family. I grew up in Trail until I was just about 18 and I moved to Vancouver and um, lived there for about six and a half years. When uh, Christine had mentioned that she was from Trail, I mean, that instantly sparked interest. Christine was rather uh, pleased, I think, to hear that I was looking to get out of the big city. Daryl and Christine, along with their pets, two cats and a dove, relocate to Trail, BC. After working for the SPCA, they decide to start a pet grooming business out of their home. It was a childhood dream of mine to work with animals, um, and I was fortunate enough to hold on to my childhood dream and pursue it. We just got far too busy for grooming, so uh, we opened up a retail slash grooming outfit uh, in trail, in a retail spot, which you know gave us our house back and more room for us to do our jobs. Chang was my 30th uh, birthday present. Uh, I was actually over the moon when she told me that she had a golden retriever lined up for my birthday present. And I couldn't wait actually to go and meet uh, the puppies. When we went to view Django for the first time, she was just about uh, six weeks old. As we saw them, this is the one that we're gonna take. These are the pups, oh, all five of them. <laughs> we couldn't take her right away at six weeks. Um, she needed her uh, set of shots, and she wasn't quite weaned to be able to leave. <laughs> when we were getting ready to leave, this little puppy came to the edge of the driveway and watched. And we both looked back, and it was like we both said, it's almost like she knows she's going to be coming with us. The bond started right there. I used to bring Django to work every day. We have a chime on our door, and when it opens, Django would be the first one. She'd get up, and she'd go out, and she'd greet the customers with her tail wagging and a big smile on her face. As Daryl and Christine enjoy small-town life and a thriving business, the couple have more good news on the horizon. We had tried for eight years to have a baby. When we did get pregnant, we, were, we felt that it was uh, this was a little miracle baby, and right from the day that we brought uh, the baby home from the hospital and introduced the dogs to the baby, Django was very interested. Uh, she had her nose right in smelling. As uh, Kobe started to get a little bit older and started talking, and he preferred to call Django baby, and uh, Django responded to Kobe. We would tell him, go get Django or call Django, and he would say, baby, and instantly she would come. On January 22nd, Daryl and Christine tuck Kobe into bed. Christine heads to a local pub to meet with a girlfriend. Daryl feeds Django and the kittens and settles down to relax. It was about 10.30. I wasn't feeling that well. I had pulled muscles in my back, and so I had a backache. So. I just retired in the living room watching TV. Two hours later, at 12.30 a.m., Daryl is asleep in the living room, but something is terribly wrong.
Django was literally in my face, within an inch of my face, into full barks. Um, when I woke up, I, I was almost annoyed why she was barking and why she was in my face. And then when I, I came to realizing that our house was pitch black and when I put my head up, I knew that there was problems as I smelled very heavy smoke. When we respond to fires, uh, there, there's a high number of residents that own pets, whether they're cats, dogs. All the animals have played a part by alerting the family that there's something wrong in the house. Cats become agitated, dogs become agitated and start barking and they want to get out. And generally they'll uh, go and nudge their owners just because they can't open the door themselves. They'll uh, go and wake the owners up to uh, let them out of the building. I got up immediately um, with Django still barking. Um, Django had run to Kobe's room barking. With the house cloaked in darkness and filling with smoke, <laughs> Daryl uses Django's barking to guide him through the house and upstairs to Kobe's room. The whole time I was yelling to Kobe from off the couch to when I got into his bedroom, Kobe, Kobe, get up, there's a fire, Kobe, Kobe. Daryl arrives upstairs at Kobe's room to find his son unresponsive. There was nothing from Kobe. He was lifeless, which was really scaring me because being in a bunk bed and, and how thick the house was filled with smoke, I, I was very scared um, of what was taking place. And the whole time, Django was barking as in a, a panic. Like, I've never heard Django bark like that before. <laughs> After the break, with his son Kobe unresponsive and the house filling with smoke, Daryl must rely on Django to guide them to safety. After being woken abruptly by his dog Django, Daryl Unger discovers that his home is on fire. By following Django's barking, he's able to find his way to his five-year-old son, Kobe. Wendy McClellan, a doctor of veterinary medicine, offers her unique perspective on animal behavior. A dog's sense of smell is incredible. It's about a thousand times stronger than humans, so it's no surprise that Django detected the fire before anybody else. <laughs> Once Kobe was over my shoulder, Django was barking through the house, leading us to the front door. <coughs> We had uh, smoke alarms installed in the house. When I was going to get Kobe, the alarms weren't going off. The house was absolutely engulfed with smoke, and the smoke alarms weren't going out. Well, learning after the fact through the fire department that we had our smoke alarms installed incorrectly. Once outside, Daryl tries again to revive Kobe. Somebody help! When Kobe actually opened his eyes and started to say something, it was just sheer relief. It was just a beautiful, beautiful thing. Golden Retrievers are very family-orientated dogs. So Django recognizes Daryl and Kobe as part of her social unit. When she senses danger, her first instinct is to rally the pack and keep everybody together. A neighbor, having just called 911, comes to Daryl and Kobe's aid. The neighbors had come out almost immediately of me yelling. I did a pretty foolish thing, uh, realizing that our two kitties were still inside. I uh, ran back into the house. The uh, smoke created from fire carries a lot of carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and that overpowers the person very quickly. The carbon monoxide forces oxygen out of the bloodstream, and uh, that renders you unconscious very quickly and the carbon dioxide actually tricks your body into breathing faster so you wind up breathing more of these gases in a lot faster. As Daryl runs back into the burning house, off-duty RCMP officer Derek Gallant drives by. He quickly stops to help. Fortunately, Constable Galen is able to find Daryl and carry him from the burning house. One of my friends had come up to me and said either your home or your, your business is on fire. And at that point, I grabbed my jacket and I was running towards the door. It's just a state of shock. It's absolute, it's a state of panic. Absolute panic, um, a very... 
a very lost feeling. Christine arrives home to find the house completely engulfed in flames, and emergency crews are on the scene. I can remember jumping out and just running down the driveway and realizing that obviously that there was a fire and that it was at my house. And uh, my first question was, where are my husband and my son? Christine finds both Kobe and Daryl safe from the fire and being attended to by paramedics. I think if uh, Constable Gallen never saw me re-enter, that it could have been a little different story. The family discovers that firemen have also rescued their two kittens, who, along with Django, have been taken in by a neighbor. Paramedics bring Kobe and Daryl to hospital so they can be treated by doctors for smoke inhalation. I remember of going into ambulance and getting a teddy bear and a cookie, and my mom came in. My mom came in. Kobe is released within hours. Doctors decide to keep Daryl overnight for observation. I left the hospital and I came to a neighbor's of ours that is just a few doors up from us. This is where Django was. And uh, I spent the night or the morning um, and I fell asleep and I can remember falling asleep in her son's bed and Django slept next to me and I can remember holding her paw. The neighbor is the one that told me that uh, Django alerted Daryl and Kobe that there was a fire in the house. A dog's first instinct when they smell fire is to get away from it as quickly as possible. So it's very remarkable that Django went back for Kobe before getting herself to safety. The next morning, Daryl is released from hospital. All three of us and Django just sat down and counted our blessings. After an emotional reunion, Christine and Daryl are briefed by the fire investigators as to the cause of the blaze. The fire started from internal combustion. Uh, we had had to use paint thinner in a container, in a plastic container. Then locked it up, you know, sealed it up, and kind of forgot about it. Daryl and Christine spend the next four months rebuilding their home, every moment being thankful for Django. One year after the Ungers move into their new home, Django is recognized with an award for her role in saving Daryl and Kobe's lives. She truly was a hero and a guardian angel in, in our eyes. I felt so indebted to her that I was just over the moon when she was awarded her medal, just knowing that she got what she really deserved. There was a lot of tears shed that day. Tears of happiness, of course. Kobe's a uh, nine-year-old little boy, he's uh, very active. I think he misses Django immensely as uh, they were great play pals together. In the late spring of 2009, the Ungers lose their beloved Django to bone cancer. A lot of time has passed now and we really have made it back to being our home. Our home is filled with pictures and memories of Django and that will always be. Oh, we miss her. All my staff misses her. Customers miss her. We miss her. She was a huge part of our life. Next, when an elderly man falls into an icy pool, his only hope for survival is Corey, a dog out for a morning walk. Without Django's quick thinking and fast acting, Daryl and Kobe would not have made it out alive. Next, we look at the story of Jay Sobel and his heroic dog, Corey. Jay Sobel remembers his three miniature schnauzers, Mia Jasmine, Mr. Magic Moment, and Corey. Oh my gosh, I'll tell you, acquiring Corey and Mia, it changed my life so significantly. After a month, I thought, what did I do? <laughs> single guy, I could go to the gym, I could play lacrosse, I could coach lacrosse. All of a sudden I had two dependents to take care of. Then a year later I thought, you know, God forbid if something happens to one of my miniature schnauzers, I do not want the second one to die of a broken heart. And uh, I acquired their nephew, Mr. Magic Moment Magic, 
sweetest dog you'd ever meet. You know, Corey was a classic salt and pepper miniature schnauzer. Um, and by that I mean he was very stubborn, very stoic, very thoughtful. Uh, his nephew Magic was black and silver. They're very playful, just want to have fun, nothing bothers them. But Corey was, as I said, a very thoughtful dog. Georgina Turner lives down the street and recalls the day she first met Jay and his amazing dog, Corey. I can't say highly enough about Corey. He was a lovely little dog. Jay really loved his dog, and he let the dog guide where they were going to walk that day. I mean, I, I've been out with him, and I've seen him. The dog led Jay. I used to walk Corey and Magic, my second male dog, together. Um, Magic, being a little younger, always knew that Corey was the top dog, and he would tend to go in one direction if Corey was going in the opposite direction. And, and I would always say, one of you help me. And Corey, it was invariably it was Corey that would come back, and then we'd walk where Magic wanted to go. Corey knew that if someone said help me, he should go to the source of the help me. Jay finds walking the dogs all together difficult as their leashes constantly get tangled up. He decides to begin walking them separately. I just decided to walk the dogs by themselves so I wouldn't have to have the fight in one direction or the other and have to ask one of them to help me. It was May 8th. It was a beautiful spring morning. Put the leash on Corey, open the front door, and I know where you're going to take me today. You're going to go where you always go. You're going to go to the hydro fields and have a smell of all the dogs that were there at 6 a.m. in the morning. But that morning was different. Um, I don't know why, he, he kind of perked up. I wasn't here that day. We'd had the, the pool cover taken off the day before. My husband bent over and uh, was doing something with the uh, outlet and toppled over into the pool. He wasn't a swimmer. He stopped right about here. He was pulling me really hard. Now, I'm a 230-pound man. My dog was about 14 and a half pounds. So to pull me, he's choking himself. It's not a pleasant situation. He wasn't going to stop, and I was intrigued, and I was determined to let him lead me, find out what was the problem. Corey strays from his usual path, pulling Jay more than 200 yards in a different direction, leading him toward the Turner's house. And it was at that point in time that I could actually hear a, a faint voice call out, help, help me. Dogs have incredible sense of hearing. They have over 18 muscles in their ears that basically allow them to act like little satellite dishes. And I said hello, and it was help, help, I'm in the pool, I can't breathe, I can't get out. By the time Jay and Corey arrive, Jack Turner has been struggling for more than 20 minutes as he desperately tries to escape. But the, the sense of pride I had as soon as I saw Jack turn in the pool, re instantly recognizing I cannot believe that my dog just pulled me here, uh, was overwhelming. And probably gave me the strength to stay calm and, and to be as, a, as much assistance as I possibly could be. When you fall into cold water, one of the first reactions that you get is of shock. So one of the first things that happens is you take a deep breath of water or a deep breath. And if you're under the water, you wind up ingesting that water. Your body starts the fight or flight reflex. And what also happens with the body is the blood also starts to shunt from your outer extremities to your core to keep all your vital organs warm. He was in quite some distress. I said, you seem to be having trouble breathing. He said, yeah, I have emphysema. When elderly people fall into cold bodies of water, they don't have the amount of fat stores that a younger person has. Their circulatory system isn't as efficient, so they, they succumb to cold water a lot faster than the average person would. After calling 911, Jay and Corey wait with Jack for help to arrive. Um, I'm convinced that Corey heard the help me, and he taught himself uh, to follow the help me and to go to whomsoever was calling help me. And that's why I really honestly believe Corey dragged me the two blocks in the 250 yards to the Turner home that morning. Yeah, was he ever a hero? Certainly was a hero. He was a beautiful little dog. And he saved my husband's life. He really did. 
Because dogs are able to pick up sounds at different frequencies than humans, Corey was able to distinguish Jack's distress calls above all other noises. It was quite a surprise about a year later, almost to the date, that I received a letter in the mail from the Toronto Chief of Police and Toronto Fire Services inviting me and my dog Corey to a ceremony where they decided that they'd give Corey a letter of recommendation for uh, saving human life. For the entire next year of Corey's life, year and a half, uh, Corey changed his route and he walked by the Turner's home every day. Jack was typically on the porch enjoying a sunny day and Corey was an old dog. He'd shuffle up the stairs and he wasn't happy unless Jack, you know, tussled his hair and played on his beard when he got to say hello. If Jack wasn't on the porch, he'd kind of look at me and look at the front door and he'd go, oh, come on, Dad, ring the doorbell so Jack will come out. If no one was home and, and, and Georgie or Jack did not open the front door, he'd hustle down the steps and he'd go into the backyard. And I can only imagine that in Corey's mind, he was thinking, well, maybe Jack's in the pool again. Um, and uh, Corey did that every day for the duration of his life. I firmly believe in my mind that Corey was a heroic dog. I miss him tremendously. To this very day, Cor Corey passed away. Um, October 13th, 2008, there isn't a day that goes by that I don't alternately shed a tear over missing my dog so much, but then smiling at, at how proud I am of, of my heroic dog. In Django's case, it was his incredible sense of smell that alerted him to a deadly fire and allowed him to get Daryl and Kobe to safety before it was too late. As for Corey, his heightened sense of hearing was the difference between life and death for Jack Turner when he found himself trapped in an icy pool. And for that, Corey and Django will always be remembered as true heroes.